Okay, so I was having some issues with the video in the corner, so I had to stop the previous recording. Uh, but I think it is kind of working this time, so yeah, no slowdown, it seems fine. So let's try again. Um, so what I was saying is that in the previous video we talked about the correction of an algorithm, but now uh, we have brief, brief, um, briefly referred in the previous video as well. Uh, now we want to explore the complexity of an algorithm, both the time complexity and the spatial complexity. And with specific concern to the time complexity, which is the one we probably will start with, we want to study the growth of functions, and that's precisely the name of chapter 3 of Corman. And uh, that starts on page 40 to uh, 43 of, of Corman. And um, when we talk about the complexity and the, the time com uh, consum uh, consum consumption and, um, and space, we need to set some conventions. And that's where we introduce the already mentioned um, random access machine. It is the machine. What is this about? Um, we, uh, when we do um, the cost analysis of an algorithm, we need a cost model. And uh, that cost model has to be generic and independent of the machine and language we use. And as a computer scientist, we are used to as computer scientists, we are used to work with uh, various uh, formal models. We have already seen uh, automata, um, formal language, and um, eventually, if, uh, depending on um, what you have already studied, um, register machines and um, Turing machines, uh, lambda calculus, uh, p calculus, CCS. Uh, um, and a lot of, of um, models. And these models, they are different. And um, usually we can, depending on the models, uh, reduce one or emulate one in another model. And we have Turing completeness and things like this. Um, and they have their advantages for certain kind of problems and disadvantages for other problems. And for asymptotic analysis, the random access machine is a good model. Something we are used to do um, is to come up with our own uh, cost model uh, that we find more useful or easier uh, to analyze a certain problem or more fitting, simply. And um, but for the purpose of these videos, uh, it is better for us to start defining some conventions and some. Uh, and start, start adopting some models that are flexible enough for uh, simple analysis from now on. And so, this one is a particularly uh, good and familiar one. So, what is it about? It, is, it has essentially three, three uh, rules. And the first rule is that every... every simple operation um, just a sec every simple operation um, and that is for example an addition a subtraction and an attribution and a if condition takes or costs costs one step um, and actually let 
me one step. Second rule, cycles and procedures. When we talk about procedures, we talk about functions um, are not, for example, uh, actually, we want to keep this simple. Example given aren't simple uh, instructions. Uh. Okay, and um, any memory access. memory access cost one step and I, and I actually should um, just finish writing this but I should actually remark this one so memory access is a, an important feature So you can already start imagine that you could come up with a model that has different costs whether the memory is on an hard drive or it's the RAM memory and that so you can uh, you can come up with a very sophisticated model where essentially most of operations have different costs or you can come up with a simple model where uh, most operations have cost when um, so or many of these, and um, and so this is a, an important aspect, and I and um, and you should always have the care of specifying what exactly you are considering, and depending on the problem and or the purpose of your analysis, where it is go going to be used, and so um, this is the machine. Uh, actually, let me use another call. This is the machine that we are going to use for the purpose of this analysis. And this is often the first step of any computer science subject. You start by defining um, your model, and then if you are going to perform an analysis, the first step is to define the environment where that analysis, or the system where that analysis is going to be performed. And so this is the machine we are going to use from now on. Um, how do we measure time on this machine? So execution time. Oops. Uh, like why can't I, I erase this? Okay. Execution time. Oh, I'm using the wrong pen. That's why it was getting weird. Uh, okay. Now that should fix it. So, uh, exactly. Uh, the, the execution time is going to be um, computed with um, measured. Um, by counting counting uh, the number of steps why is it getting so weird? steps Um, in function and that means we are parameterizing our measurement with this length function of input length and that is uh, 
our t of n. And finally, the third aspect, as I said, this has three aspects or rules, whatever you prefer to call it, maybe aspects is a better name. Uh, the third aspect is that the operations, um, simplified operations, yeah, simplified operations. When you talk about uh, asymptotic um, analysis and, or asymptotic in general, we often are talking about simplifications or approximations, and either by topping them or sorry, stealing them or um, flooring them. Uh, approaching it from upwards or approaching from downwards, I don't know, I'm not sure about the right words here, but uh, the idea is either from the top or from the bottom. So, simplified operations, uh, these may give an, um, an idea that maybe we are simplifying too much to the point that this is no longer useful, but it's not, not the case. When we talk about simplifying is that adding adding uh, two integers is not the same the same has mm, multiplying able to tell you which page that's on, it would be nice. And uh, here there's an important observation about this aspect and let me just pull this a bit up so my face isn't covering the text. And um, uh, let me open uh, the scan here. And here there's a, a nice analysis about, um, or a nice comment at least, about this. Um, Maybe I, I pause the video rapidly just to find it again. And I'm back. And so, um, now I, I referred to Kiana, I didn't specify what the book was. Um, the book is, uh, let me see the cover, uh, Stephen S. Kiana, uh, the author, and um, the book's name is The Algorithm Design Manual uh, from Springer. And the edition I have is from 2010. And um, the RAM model of computation is presented in chapter 2 algorithm analysis. And that's page 44 to me. So, um, Scanner does an observation, and it's the, sim the, the same about the simplified operations. I've defined it in the, the. Oops, the zoom thingy. I've defined it the, the, the model slightly differently, but it's the same thing. Uh, Skinner talks a bit more about how it works, and um, and you see, he says, and that's a, a nice uh, observation. Uh, the RAM is a simple model of how computers perform. Perhaps it sounds too simple. After all, multiplying two numbers takes more time than adding two numbers on most processors, which violates the first assumption of the model. Fancy compiler loop unrolling and hyperthreading may well violate the second assumption, and certainly memory access di times differ greatly depending on whether data sits in cache or on disk. This makes us zero for free on the truth of our basic assumptions. Um, so then he proceeds to the other comp uh, comparisons about 
how sometimes um, um, considering some simplif simplified versions and modeling with simplified um, and, uh, and very drastic exceptions uh, actually doesn't uh, stop us from doing some neat conclusions and extrapolating um, good information. And that's the case with RAM, it's the case with the, the round and flat earth models that as Skiana uh, suggests here. RAM is an excellent model and, uh, and it allows us to do uh, simple analysis and, um, and, uh, and without uh, uh, getting in some red... Uh, I think it's called, the expression is red herring, so just Google it. Google it really fast. Um, exactly, red herrings. So, without getting into red herrings. Um, or rabbit holes, and things like this. Uh, uh, that's just my observation. The, um, the word I was looking for moments ago was uh, boundings. So, upper bound, lower bound, that's what I meant. Um, I don't know why the, the word was running from, away from me. So, with that being said, um, with that being said, uh, just want to confirm something. slightly forward. Um, right next to, um, to random access machine model, uh, we would get into the, um, the complexity definition. And we have three cases, and this is really the last thing I'm going to refer to now in this video, because I guess it's better for us to keep things uh, smaller and better divided. So I'm really now just going to give you a simple uh, notion of what's coming next. Um, but first maybe an example. If we have the following program, uh, an integer count int count, oh, sorry, count equals zero, and we have for int i equals 0, i lesser than n plus plus i, if v of i, a vector v, is equal equals to 0, we are going to plus plus count. And I could have braces here. I actually usually put my braces on the line below, but since we have not a lot of space in this screen, I'm going to put them in K and R style and R style instead of Hallman style. Okay, now it looks like a curly brace. Uh, what do we have in this small uh, uh, piece of code? We have the following. We have two variables declarations. Um, variable declaration. We have um, two attributions. And so let's just ensure we see what it where it is. Two variable declaration, one here and one here. Okay. We have two attributions. And 
these attributions happen one year and one year. All right. Now, see, I'm doing this division. I'm dividing. We are, we, I'm dividing this way, but you could divide it in a different manner. Uh, it you will define your model and the operations you have. And I'm calling these simple operations, so I can separate them, whatever I would prefer, because they all have cost one. So it doesn't really matter how I categorize them. Uh, it matters for the proofs I do. So there's that. Um, we have uh, one, no, we have n plus one. Mm -hmm. n plus one uh, lesser uh, comparisons. And I have n equals comparison and you see I'm talking about this one for this here and I'm talking about uh, this one for this here, correct? Because we are going to do plus one when, when the condition will fail so n plus one and this one happens n times because the, the, the loop body will run n times. We have, and this is, we have to be careful about this kind of half by ones. Um, we have n array access. Do you remember I said that access? I said that um, memory access at cost one. And finally, and even because I have no more space to write down, uh, we have um, between n and 2n uh, increments. Because we do not know um, how many uh, zeros we have in our array. So we are sure to have n uh, increments because we are going to increment n times. Um, but we do not know how many times we are going to increment this variable. So it's a closer, a closer interval between n and 2n. And I now remember that I've been using this notation for intervals. Uh, and while I much like to use the ISO notation, um, the ISO mathematics notation, this is the notation we have in Portugal for intervals. So uh, this is a closed interval from 0 to 42. It starts at 0 and it ends at 42. Uh, this is an open interval at 42. And this is an open interval from 0 to 42. And uh, I really like this notation. This is a Portuguese notation for intervals. I find it is much more clear than doing things like uh, 0, 42, open, closed. I think this is much more misleading, uh, especially in handwritten uh, when we are doing it handwritten. So yeah, there's that. Uh, with an open uh, Brace, I think it's much more clear. Square bracket, I mean, uh, an, an open square bracket, I think it leaves much less spa space for ambiguity. And so, this is about a random access machine here. Um, we can now count the, um, the total operations we have uh, in the, the best and worst case uh, using this. And now it's, let me save this page and I'm going to so show you. So this is page 6, page 7. And um, let's create a new page. Um, okay. Now. Um, still about the same program. Uh, we can say that in the worst case, um, in the worst case, 
And the worst case is um, let me just the worst case. Uh, just a second. Um, is and I'm going to quote Skiena. Um, is the um, is the function defined by the maximum number of steps? The worst case complexity of an algorithm of the algorithm is the function defined by the maximum number of steps taken in any instance of size n. This represents the curve passing through the highest point in each column. Um, so for this program and following this definition, which is the common definition, uh, frankly, um, we can say that in, we, in the worst case, t of n will be 2 plus 2 plus n plus 1 plus n plus n plus 2n. Why? And let me show you the previous page. I would like actually to show them side by side, but that would be a bit complicated at this point. So, in the previous page, and let me ensure things are looking crisp clear in the, in the video. In the previous page, you see, you, see, you have this code here. What is the worst case uh, with this code? The worst case is when um, uh, all the values of this array are uh, zero. That's when you have more instructions execution is uh, executing. So, for example, there are, there is a common body here. You see, this two is the variable declaration. You start by declaring this variable and this variable. Um, so two. Uh, these uh, attributions is because you are going to attribute in when you declare. So two plus two, and um, this n plus 1 um, is going to be the number of times this line is going to be executed uh, and, and with that uh, you have hand comparisons on this line too. so this line happens n times and this one happens n plus 1 time so n plus 1 plus n and then you have uh, in the worst case in which all the values so this is going to be how is true for this array, for this uh, program, uh, for actually, I mean, for this input, uh, so you have uh, n uh, increments, and um, and then you have um, sorry, did I say uh, I'm talking about this one? So uh, you have n comparisons, which was this one. Sorry, I lost it. Briefly lost it. Uh, and then you have hand uh, on this line. Uh, so these two hand uh, increments for this line and n comparisons on this line and n memory access on here. So uh, that was my confusing. You have n memory access, you have hand comparisons, and then you have two plus uh, two hand uh, increments. So n memory access and comparisons to hand um, increments. Okay, uh, sorry about that. Really small confusing there. Um, yeah. Exactly. Oh, beware that we could have added this increment before these two hand. It could actually be n here and we could have uh, for example when we talk about uh, 2 plus n is the comparisons so we could have plus n here all right um, I did the two uh, the two n because after you have this cost model and you have uh, done the intervals it's really fast for you to have them all up because you know what is going to happen and then if you want the upper, k, upper bound, you have this one and if you want the, uh, uh, the lower bound, you have this one and that dot is really small but I'm talking about this one for the lower bound and this one for the upper bound so if you do the, the cost model 
and you feel how the fields of that cost model for your algorithm, you rapidly, without accidents or mistakes, you can rapidly come up with the expression that gives you the, the, the function of big O and big omega and omega and things like this. So this is the worst case. You can simplify this a bit. Um, you can, so it will become um, five plus five uh, n. And um, in the best case, mm, it's analogous. You would have best case. Um, it would be t of n. Well, you have already simplified it there, so it would be 5 plus 4 n. Correct, because you, you, the only change is that you are going to use n instead of 2 n, so you have to subtract 1 and that's your best case. Uh, you could also do the expression like that, it would be 2 plus 2 plus n plus 1 plus, plus n. N plus N. So mm, that's it for the, the this analysis um, of this program. And now the thing is um, talking about best case and worst case. Uh, it's fairly. Um, Misleading, especially the the best case. You you most you most often will not have the best case. Uh, the most frequent I would have to say is the the worst case, and so the worst case is fairly useful on that regard. The best case not really. Uh, most algorithms have a really good case, and but that case is not that often at all. And, um, and you have an average case that sometimes happens. Uh, the worst case is often the most useful case, uh, although the, the average case is fairly helpful. Um, and so what are we uh, really talking about? What we are saying is this analysis depends greatly in the distribution of your inputs. If you have Random, uh, randomized inputs, then you are uh, uh, likely to take a bit of all the cases, sometimes the best case, sometimes the worst case, more often maybe the average case, but or even more often the, the worst case actually. But um, you can't really come up with an average case without you actually knowing the the statistical distribution of your inputs. So you have the worst case. Uh, these are now uh, somewhat informal definitions, but I think are the the most helpful. The worst case is when t of n is equals to the max time, maximum time. of an algorithm, that's what we are talking about, for any input of length n. This is the most usual. But the average case is when you have a t of n that is equals to the average time of an algorithm for every input input of length This requires you to imply requires t 
to know. The statistical distribution um, of the the input. And finally, the best case. This is honestly shitting. Um, uh, this is sometimes. Uh, this is shitting. is fast for some inputs. These are somewhat informal definitions. Um, they give you an idea. That, that's, that's what I want to give. That's, that's actually how I want to give uh, for, for this, this video. Uh, just a brief notion. Uh, this is a mathematical tool for to compare functions, and um, in mathematics you usually study the, the behavior of the limits. In computer science, you usually study the behavior of arbitrarily large inputs or the the graph rate of a function, and we have a notation for this. We have the big O, the omega, the theta, and um, and even the the small ho and the small omega, and um, this allows us to simplify expressions like the previous one. Um, when we focus uh, only in the um, the order of the function, um, and so we can actually. Uh, before we close this video uh, and go for another one, we can say that, and this is how we are going to start the next video, um, an f of n is, and I actually prefer to use this notation, I was writing as in Corman, but it is a, a big O of g of n, it means that this function is, and let me just picture how this is said in, in English really fast. Uh, I think it's upper bound again. Yeah. So this is uh, an, upper, an upper bound. And I'm going to give you the definitions uh, next video. But it, it, it means that there is a C such uh, that times G of N, it's a limit from up. Just a second. Okay, I'm back and um, I took the opportunity of this pause to write down the rest I intended to. As I said, in the next video we are going to explore more of this, uh, namely see some illustration of it and uh, a more formal approach. But And this is in page um, 45, actually the illustration is on page 45 of Corman. As I said, I'm using this notation here. Um, Corman, as, in, as stated in page 45, does not use this notation, they use an equal sign. Um, 
but it's pretty much the same. Um, it's just a, a notation of use uh, on Carmen. Um, Carmen explains that we abuse equality in this way, but we saw a see later in this section that doing so has its advantages. We are not going to do so in this video, series of videos. Um, but what this means, this, uh, this big hole, this omega and this uh, theta, is that uh, if f of n is in big hole of g of n, then that means it has an upper bound. And so c times g of n, and there is a c uh, such that uh, g of n is a superior limit, and if it's omega, it's an inferior limit, and if it is theta, it's like say, Kármán says, uh, then there is a, there exists a positive con positive constant c1 and c2 such that it can be sandwiched between c1 g of n and c2 g of n. Um, yeah, exactly. So uh, we are talking the one is very sandwiched which is f of n. Um, okay, so with that we finish this video. It's a smaller video and I'm happy for that. And, um, and when I say it's a smaller video it will have exactly 32 minutes as soon as I press stop recording now.